Now the fun begins. Budget. Stop! You violated the law. Welcome back to another episode of the Game Pass Gamecast, your weekly go-to podcast for all things Xbox, Xbox Game Pass, and of course, PC gaming, including news, rumors, and conversation around them damn good video games. You can catch new episodes of the show when they drop each and every Friday morning on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, SoundCloud, and all other major podcast services. So be sure to subscribe to us, rate us, review us, all that jazz, whatever you do on your podcast apps just do it to us you know we're accepting that (laughs) wherever you get a podcast at and follow us on twitter at gpgc podcast stay up to date with everything regarding the show video games like and our dope giveaways i'm your host as always travis white aka travelis on most internet platforms joining me as always my partner in crime my co-pilot mike p pack mike what's good what's going on i already know what you've been playing but you said you have a shout out a PSA on what to play. I mean, I still want you to tell us what you've been playing, even though everyone knows probably what you've been playing. But what's your PSA that you want people to know right now? Yeah, I mean, as always, I don't want to bore everyone to death. We all know I've been playing Halo Infinite. We all know that shit. We all know I've been mixing in some Valheim, mixing in this, mixing in that. So I'm not going to go through all that. But I do have a PSA because before the show, I'm just thumbing through the options on the Game Pass store here. Um or at least what's available to download on Game Pass. I just need it to be known that, you know, if you've heard us talk about, um, you know, the Resident Evil games, and you've heard us say about how good 7 is for a majority of the game, but we just don't really like the boat segment, well, just want you to know out there, if you are a subscriber to Game Pass, which if you're not, uh, I don't know what planet you're on, but you might want to get on that because there's some really good options on there. But <clears throat> Resident Evil 7 is available on Game Pass as we speak. Available for download. You can actually play it on your PC if you'd like also. So, with that being said, if you have never given it a chance and you've considered playing that game ever in the past, please do yourself a favor. Please go ahead and give that game a download and a fair shake. Um, It deserves it, and I think you, if you're someone who thinks you'll like it, I think you should really give that game a shot. So, that's my PSA for today. Go download Resident Evil 7 on either Xbox or on PC and play it, because you're going to love it. Well, at least three quarters of it. Yeah, it's three fourths of a perfect horror game. Um, yes, definitely play it on PC because I went back and played that. I played it twice. No, three times technically on console because we played through it at Adam's house the one time when it came back when it came out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Actually, no, I've played that motherfucker four times on console, four times at least, Mm -hmm. which isn't crazy for Resident Evil games, but Molly and I replayed it not that long ago on console. And, but last year, I replayed it on PC. I bought it on Steam. And Mm. let me tell you, if you can play the PC version, play the PC version, version, because goddamn, does that game in first, like a first person Resident Evil game feel fucking fantastic on PC. I mean, you know, from playing Village on PC, but yeah, um, it, yeah, if you could play, if you could play the new iterations, like the first person mainline entries of Resident Evil, the new iterations, um, not the remakes. I mean, play the remakes on PC, too. They're fucking fantastic. But playing that style of game in first person on PC is fucking like perfect. It, it is from a gameplay perspective. It's fucking fantastic. Um, but yeah, obviously, this is a big show. Obviously, you guys already know going into this, the big news and whatnot. So I'm not going to bore you too much with what I've been playing and whatnot. Um, but just real quick, because we got a fucking shit ton of stuff to talk about. We got a thick boy today, we, guys. He thick. Damn, that's a thick boy. <laughs> yeah, so we got a big ass show today. Um but on my end, um, kind of been dabbling in a bunch of stuff. For some reason, I am, because I just, I guess, don't value my free time. I'm playing through Skyrim yet again. Um, so <laughs> I'm, j- I'm just kidding. I'm much more higher on the game than, uh, than I think Mike and Adam are. Um, but I've been playing through that, just kind of dicking around, uh, going through the... Right now, I'm just capping off the Thieves Guild, which I thought was always decent in Skyrim. Um, so I've been going back through playing that just 
mostly, hey, I don't know what I want to play. I just want to play something. I'm going to play Skyrim. Uh, or it's good that I could just hop in there, do a couple quests, um, you know, and whatnot. But I just kind of wanted, I love just popping into Bethesda games from time to time just to kind of sink into a world if I want to. And are, you, are you showing the crypto bros how fungible their tokens really are? Yes. Yes, I am. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, besides that, though, uh obviously halo infinite been playing that um and i'm still i'm personally still having a great time with it um i'm diamond three now so i'm getting close i'll tell you what it is fucking horrific to have to play that game ranked in solo queue to get to onyx personally just by and granted i'm playing mouse and keyboard but um it is painful to i forgot how painful it is to solo queue in halo specifically in this fashion um but we march on. We will get the Onyx soon enough. <laughs> um, but uh, on top of that, though, one thing I wanted to play... Oh, and Molly and I are still working our way through uh, Telltale's Walking Dead series yet again. So um, we're still in season... Two. Yeah, season two. Um, kind of just working our way through that. Uh, if it's something that, you know, we're sitting down, we don't know what we want to do. How, let's just play that. So, um, But one game that I do want to hop back into, and not only you, Mike, but one of my co-workers put it on my radar again, PUBG. Um, mm -hmm. I made sure I had it. I When I got a new hard drive, because I have a couple of SSDs in my PC, but for the show, obviously, with editing and random shit like that, and um, I need a fucking thick boy hard drive. So I bought almost like two years ago, like a four terabyte hard drive to replace my like poopy one terabyte hard drive that I had. So on the back end, though, that meant I could make sure I installed all these games that, you know what, I kind of think I'm going to want to play one day and I don't necessarily want to reinstall them. I'm just going to install them in like the deep fucking void I have on my hard drive. And that was one of them. I was like, you know what, I'm going to keep PUBG on there just in case for some reason I don't value my time and just want to play that. Um, but that was also when supposedly, you know, the game was well, I know the game was not in a good state at that point, but supposedly the game's fun again. Um, naturally, the uh, night that I did want to get on, that I was like, you know what, I'm going to play PUBG tonight. I'm going to I'm going to fucking hop on and play PUBG. The night that I hopped on, they naturally had server maintenance on the PC end um, at peak NA hours. Peak NA hours, they're going to have server maintenance for four hours. From eight to twelve. Eastern. <laughs> I think it's a foreign, isn't it a foreign company? <clears throat> it is, it is, and I'll give them that. As, and Doc, as Doc used to love to call them Blue Ball Studios. Yes, whatever. yes. Now, granted, I will give them that. I, I will. And two, obviously, I'm, we're obviously pretty pro-dev on this show and, you know, making sure people don't have to have shitty workplace environments and whatnot. So if that means not having somebody in there at three in the morning and they can actually sleep in their fucking bed in a normal time, more power to them. Do it then. That's one not. I won't play PUBGs on Monday or Monday nights or whatever. Like, oh God. Um, but it was a little frustrating to be like, motherfucker, I just want to get on and play this goddamn game for once. Um, but I am wanting to hop in and play it. Uh, I may jump into it tonight, maybe. I don't know. Because at the same time, we both were downloading Rainbow Six Extraction. That's out. And that's out on Game Pass, too. That's what we're fucking downloading it through. Um, I'm excited to play that. That'll probably be the game I hop into tonight. But um but yeah that's pretty much it on my and i don't think there's anything else that i can think of that i've been playing kind of just one of those like there's nothing big out right now and we haven't had like we were playing valheim for a while which we still are but um just with everyone kind of back to work now you going head first into you know making sure you guys are ready for your next tournament that's coming up and whatnot like in scrimming most nights you know, it's just been one of those games our schedules hasn't haven't overlapped like they usually do. So but we got to get back to playing something. Um, but anyways, Mike, that's not why people are here, you know, because naturally everybody comes every week to just hear what we, you know, have been playing. And we yeah, definitely and they love our they love our inside jokes and everything. That's been a big that's been a huge thing that, you know, we get a lot of feedback on. It's just how much you all love our inside yeah. jokes. You guys just love hearing about our day I think and people, all of our inside jokes. Yeah, it's weird how people are shocked that after 100, now 134 episodes, we could have inside jokes that 
reference back to, you know, maybe episode 30 or something like that. And not only that, but we've been friends literally all our yeah. lives, essentially, at this point, like since kindergarten. So God forbid we're transparent in the show. And we don't just put on an act. Anyways, though, Mike, because everyone obviously comes and listens to us for this, for us, what we're playing and whatnot, it, clearly, and these inside jokes and everything. For once, though, we got we got a fucking girthy boy. We got a thick boy of a show to go on. And I couldn't fucking believe this. I open up. I want you to close your eyes, baby. And I'm talking to you, audience. Mike, if you want to, too, that's fine, too. Um, mm -hmm. Close your eyes. And I just want you to imagine me going to my desk and my job and being like, you know, fuck. Another day, another dollar. This fucking blows. I don't want to fucking do that. You know what? Like everyone who is a 20 year old something, first thing I'm going to do at work when I'm bored and probably procrastinating work is pull out my phone. And lo and behold, I see a little fucking tweet pop up. Just a little bugger. Okay. The fact that I see Nibel, Nibelian to some of you, post or retweet somebody from the Wall Street Journal, which I'm trying to pull up the name on here for a second. And I couldn't believe it. Uh, where is it? Here we go. From Walter over at Bloomberg, uh, Delta Own. Microsoft nears deal to buy Activision, sources say. Like I said, from the Wall Street Journal. I was like, okay, yeah, like... Maybe, like, down the line. We've heard about this. We heard, hey, remember whenever Microsoft rumored was interested in EA like yeah we've we've heard that whatever then on top of that we get a Microsoft is nearing a deal to buy Activision Blizzard sources tell us that is valued at nearly 70 billion dollars over on the terminal to then literally a couple minutes later it's official from Microsoft Microsoft has acquired Activision Blizzard for 68.7 billion b i l l i o n billion dollars what in the actual fuck mike i want you to tell me as somebody who like myself grew up and has a very soft spot for blizzard games not their shitty executives who need to just be jettisoned into the sun of course in a non-lethal way i don't wish death upon my enemies you know we're talking metaphorically jettisoned into the sun what is your gut reaction to this shit like what did when you read that and you saw like i because i instantly messaged you guys i was like what? am i reading this right what the fuck is going on like my you're like from trailer park boys what in the literally donnie just <laughs> what in the fuck Ricky? i paid 10 fucking dollars a month for this satellite <laughs> what what was your gut reaction whenever you woke up saw that what, what was going through your fucking head yeah i mean it was it broke pretty early in the day so it, did. it was certainly something that just it just and it's something that like just came out of the blue i know we've talked about mergers or some like purchases on the show before um when it came to different different like studios mm -hmm. but this one kind of came out of the blue we always kind of threw around the like oh what if xyz would happen ha right. ha ha and it was always just like pretty much hypothetical and i think we even said like you know what if blizzard got rescued i know for mm -hmm. me i've usually said like what if um <clears throat> what if microsoft bought bungie and made that like held them hostage and made them work on halo which at this point would be hilarious but um yeah i mean my gut reaction to this was like holy shit you know you've heard how much money microsoft has i mean it's common sense you know how big of a company microsoft is but it's still wild to hear the just amount that was spent to purchase blizzard activision but not only that but just the 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 gourd and the balls on Microsoft to just pull the trigger on this is something truly crazy to me because it's a good investment at the end of the day because Blizzard makes a lot of money. I think mm -hmm. everyone understands that, even with the transgressions from the company recently. But more so the fact that Microsoft is going to have control of a vast majority of, you know, super... Uh, 
tight, like super titles, I guess, like COD and and Halo. Like now, under the Microsoft umbrella, is technically COD, technically Halo. You know, Halo, StarCraft, Diablo, World of Warcraft. Like all those are now under the Microsoft umbrella, and to me. It's just a crazy world that we live in that all of these are now going to be under the exact same umbrella first and foremost. Mm -hmm. But secondly, um, the fact that now I I guess some people are feeling hopeful about certain game franchises. And I guess you really have to think that way. Like how cool it is that now Microsoft, who literally has fuck you money, evidently, Mm -hmm. um, which we knew, but like we didn't know how much they were willing to spend um you know what they're willing to do or want to do with a game franchise now they can kind of you know start to relieve the pressure on some of the studios that were probably getting pressured by blizzard to release games um a game that comes to mind that would do great from a year break especially now that warzone is so popular is like call of duty microsoft can come in and tell tell activision like hey we're going to give every single one of your clients because now, you know, how they're all working on COD games at the same time. Mm-hmm. You know, they all have two years to make their games nowadays. We have we have Warzone, but everyone can take two years to make these games. And just how different it would make Call of Duty if they had an appropriate amount of time, if they're going to rework engines and do things of that nature. Mm-hmm. So that kind of is my gut, gut reaction. I'm excited for the future to see what comes of... Um, you know, StarCraft, what comes of Diablo. The fir- Another thing that comes to mind is, like, the StarCraft ghost game that never got r- made. Yeah. Like, stuff, just goofy stuff like that. That really is me being a little crazy because that kind of stuff probably isn't going to happen. But it's still something wild to really think about, in my opinion. But that's not... I'll be honest. To me, that's not that crazy. Because to me, what this deal signifies is not, one, not only one, a fresh start. Um just some basic info to kind of throw out there before I kind of start going into uh, everything. Um, where did I have it? I had it right here just because everything's going nuts. Um, that this deal obviously isn't going to close. The earliest it could close is the beginning of the fiscal year for them, which I believe is July. Um, but at the latest, it will close the following, like the beginning of the following fiscal year. So, Within that July 2022 to 2023 range, it's going to close sometime in there. Um, On top of that, though, because like Bethesda, this is just an announcement that they intend to buy them. But at the same time, too, Microsoft is a company that alone, which when you were saying that, I had to look up their yearly revenue just to kind of put in perspective. In 2021, this is their annual revenue, which... Uh, granted that we're not talking net income or anything like that but you got to think like acquisitions and purchasing purchases like this are probably maybe not to this degree built into their you know their uh cost analysis for each year that they're mm-hmm. obviously banking for that but in 2021 microsoft had a revenue of 168 million dollars so when you think about it it's like yeah they have fuck you money obviously but they have enough money where now like and granted, we're talking how they have billions and billions and billions and billions and billions in the bank. They're like Nintendo. They just have a stockpile of fucking cash that they can go and do this shit. But if you look at how much money they're making per year, it's not like it's not crazy. But on top of that, it's a new fresh lease because at the end of the day, no matter what, even though Phil Spencer said, hey, once this deal finalizes, everyone's going to report to me uh, under me. Uh, what do you say officially? Up close, we will... Or no, no, no. Oh, here it is. Yeah, the, it'll go Phil Spencer, then his board of executives, then below, like right adjacent with them will be Blizzard's leadership team, just like you would see with, you know, Bethesda, I'm sure as well, um, the hierarchy that they have there. But... um. On top of that, though, while, you know, they Xbox did come out and say, hey, they're going to uh, Blizzard and Activision are going to operate independently for right now until we're acquired. They're still going to operate same as usual until, you know, obviously we finalize the deal and everything. Then they'll report to Phil directly. Bobby Kodak is still going to be there, but from the Wall Street Journal as well, though, um, 
Or... He rides a mechan- he rides a mechanical dodo bull. We get it. Like, yes, yes, yes. He's he's um, a fucking twat. Yeah. Uh, this is from the Wall Street Journal. Uh, Bobby Kodak, Activision's longtime CEO, is expected to leave after this deal closes, according to people familiar with those plans. Microsoft had said it in its announcement Tuesday that Mr. Kodak quote will continue to serve as CEO of Activision Blizzard, and that after the deal closes quote the Activision Blizzard business will report to Microsoft Gaming Chief. Phil Spencer, but the companies have agreed that he will depart once the deal closes. The people have said, and I'm sure he's going to fucking make bank on the way out too. Um, they're not just going to, it's, they're not just going to fucking, like I said, metaphorically jettison him into the sun, though. We all wish he could be metaphorically jettisoned into the sun in that whole fucking executive branch. Um, but on top of that, uh, like I said, it's a fresh start for blizzard. This is, I, I think they saw, and th- supposedly they're the ones who wanted to actually, they're the ones who inquired, not reversed, that supposedly Activision reached out or was interested in selling and reached out to Xbox. I, I believe that's what I heard. Definitely that they were the one shopping themselves around uh, and not opposite. And to me, that says that they only thought they could be fixed in in terms of their culture and the way that they operate from a synergy and logistical standpoint that they need to be bought out. You can only to fix the large scale issues needs to be widespread cultural change within their, within the workplace or within the workplace. And you can't do that with the same executive brain. You just can't, you can't, I mean, people change, but when you're talking about shitty stuff like that, people can't change. And we're talking about decades of enabling that. So, like I said, freedom that they get in terms of uh, like a fresh start. But on top of that, too, you bringing up StarCraft Ghost, to me, that game is more possible now than ever. More possible mm-hmm. easily when, when it was with Activision, obviously, but more possible when Blizzard still operated independently. This game, what Microsoft is being able to do, and I'm not one, I, I don't like the idea of every single developer being bought up by either PlayStation or or being bought up by either Sony or Microsoft. I don't like that idea. I want developers to have the creative freedom to make good shit. But at the end of the day, um, Tim Schafer and Double Fine are a great example. At the end of the day, somebody who's like Tim Schafer, who is viewed as one of the best game designers in gaming history, really, but definitely in the modern age of gaming, for 20 plus years, uh, Psychonauts, Grim Fandango, Full Throttle, um monkey island like for years though running that studio he always had to worry about money they don't have to worry about money now and at the end of the day they just want to make games and if that means having somebody financially support them to the way that and obviously still give them the fun or the creative freedom they want to and i think that's what's so alluring about when people approach microsoft is that they have uh, they have well beyond fuck you money that they're able to turn around and say, you know, what do you guys want to do? If we acquire you or if you're acquired, what do you want to do? You know, mm-hmm. yes, there's going to be call of duty. Uh, we're going to get into call of duty. We're going to get to talk all about that and whatnot. But the possibility of now having, instead of having what it, there's what three or four studios that work on call of duty, correct? Yeah, Raven, uh, Sledgehammer, uh, Treyarch, and, then, and uh, Infinity Ward, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So instead of having four studios working on Call of Duty, you could have two. You could have two in the rotation at a time working on it or working on the platform of Call of Duty if they keep it that way. Um, you know, however they choose to move forward with Call of Duty. And you open up two development studios that if they're focusing on one Call of Duty product at a time and actually mm-hmm. giving it the time of day, it deserves to have the breath that it deserves the development time it deserves that it's not an they don't have to worry about having a fucking fucking annualized franchise out of this to give it the time to breathe and work out that's two whole development two large-scale triple a development studios that are available now to they're not chained to call of duty anymore they're not chained to one franchise they're not you know bioware isn't chained to like it'd be like bioware not being chained to mass effect or dragon age or whatever um you know they don't have to worry about they it's more now like what do you want to play or what do you want to make like yeah 
what are you guys, you know, great at? They're great at first person shooters or, you know, at least on paper for the sole fact of, I mean, we're looking at, again, it's the 13th year in a row. The Call of Duty was the best selling franchise in gaming. Um, you know, it tro- topped the N- NPD chart yet again. So it gives freedom. And that's what I think Microsoft does best, that they have the amount of money to say, listen, yes, we want people. And at the end of the day, it's all to just drive Game Pass subscriptions because that's their model moving forward. It's all to say, like. OK. We want you to obviously sell. We want people to like this stuff. You got to make something good for it to sell. But at the end of the day. If yours ends up being a critical darling and not maybe the most successful financially like it's not selling millions and millions of copies that's okay like we have the money that we can offset that we have different avenues and that's why i think a deal like this could only be done by a microsoft sony couldn't do this deal nintendo probably couldn't do this deal even though nintendo has a fuck ton of money nintendo couldn't do this deal you know this is like this would be like google buying activision this would be like facebook or you know whatever it is meta buying the metaverse the metaverse buying you know it's something like that this big tech entity because microsoft has so many irons in the fire with their software with their hardware now too with you know microsoft surfaces and things like that on top of just you know and we're talking about a company that is literally it's like calling a tissue kleenex you can't like when people think computers they think windows Realistically, at the end of the day, when they think personal computers, they think Windows for the most part. That every 99% of home PCs have Windows installed on them. They have Office installed on them. Like, there, nobody else could pull off this deal just for the sole fact of they have too much money, than, m- way more money than any other gaming entity that could do that. Any other first-party publisher, hardware developer, whatever, or hardware um, producer, whatever you want to call it. So to me, this is now better than ever in terms of, hey, do you guys want to make, you know, I, the uh, crew that was working on the specific uh, Blizzard studio that was working on uh, StarCraft, do you guys want to revisit that? Or what do you want to tell, do you want to work on StarCraft? Do you want to, if you want to work on StarCraft, do you want to make another RTS or do you want to try something else in that universe? Like, let's let's you know let's brainstorm let's tr- think of like anything else that is going on in that you know universe that you would want to try or you would think would be an interesting story to tell or an interesting gameplay idea that you have that might work in that universe same with or, Warcraft or hear me out hey we want to go with a a little bit of a deeper Halo Wars like yeah. game you know what i mean would you guys be interested in working on that? So fuck, let that's the, let the team. Yeah, I was going to say, fuck, let the team. Uh, I can't remember which Blizzard studio worked on StarCraft. Um, I'll look that up real quick. Um, but, you know, what we're talking. Uh, let me see. I just got it here now. Um, it just says Blizzard. There's uh, one of the Blizzard branches that worked on this. Fuck, now that you're all working under the same roof, do you want to make a new Halo Wars? Like, mm-hmm. using, you know, the StarCraft engine. Like, who the fuck cares? Like, sure, whatever, we have the IP, go ahead and do it. Or Gears of War, or fuck, just make something new. Like, who the fuck cares? Like, to me, that's the biggest strength of this deal outside of, you know, obviously just fucking trimming the cancer, like, cutting the cancer out of the company. But more so, this is providing... Microsoft seems to provide... The idea of, I don't want to say, oh, they're giving the indie dream to be able to like, you know, hey, here's a blank check, go do whatever. It's not, I'm sure it's not necessarily that, but they're much more concerned about, we want content drives subscriptions and what they're worried about is subscriptions. They want people in their ecosystem and the best way to get them in their ecosystem is Game Pass. It's the lowest uh, you know barrier to entry. You could, If there's a 99% chance that you're able to pick up a device you own in your house and use it, whether it's a web browser or, you know, your PC or your Xbox or your phone, you have something that probably could use it or that was is compatible with Game Pass. And it's all to drive just subscriptions at the end of the day. So to me, like, they're more worried about it's like Netflix in the sense of 
you know, yes, you're going to have some games that maybe don't speak to you or aren't your cup of tea or, you know, hey, that maybe just aren't great, but at least they're trying something. It provides a space, like they're providing the ability to, because at the end of the day, that's more content that they could say, hey, look, look at all these first party games that we have day and date on this service. Look at all these partners that we have right now that are still third party that we're working with. This, If you want to play, you know, uh, StarCraft, if you want to play Overwatch, if you want to play, uh, you know, Call of Duty or whatever, like, boom, it's right here. Like, and, you know, we're going to have more interesting things from these studios that aren't necessarily tied to these products anymore. That, you know, Vicarious Visions doesn't have to fucking work on, you know, be a support studio for Call of Duty. Or it doesn't have to fucking, you know, which, granted, they're the ones who did the majority of development on um, Diablo 2 uh, Resurrected, which is great. Like, that's awesome. And they did a good job with that. But... Mm -hmm. If they want to do something else, they can fucking do something else. You know, if Toys for Bob, who did the um, the uh, Spyro remakes and worked, uh, did the newest Crash game, Crash 4, that was really well uh, well received, they want to make a fucking Banjo-Kazooie game, they can make a Banjo-Kazooie game now. Because Rare isn't going to do it, so let them do it. They're great at 3D platformers. Let them fucking do it. Like, it's it just opens up so much fucking freedom. Sorry, I didn't mean to. I went really long on that, but it it really okay. it really opens up a lot of this. Um, but just kind of looking because there's been new stuff to drop today and whatnot. Um, another couple things that I want to pull out, and then I'll kick it over to you, Mike. Um, but Phil did another interview with the Washington Post, um, which he said just some of the things he was asked about. Uh, you know, what are like? Are you? Uh, Obviously, like, are you happy with the new IP or what are you interested in? Um, I know he was quoted in saying, like, he's interested uh, that interested in necessarily bringing back, um, you know, some older IPs. Um, here's a quote that I'm pulling from the, like I said, the Washington Post. Quote, I was looking at the IP list. I mean, let's go, Spencer said. King's Quest, Guitar Hero. I should know this, but I think they got Hexen. Hexen, indeed, an Activision Blizzard property, is a cult hit first person game about using magic spells, which was on the N64. I remember that back in the day. Um, Microsoft pending acquisition of Activision Blizzard also means owning the rights to many creations from gaming's past, including Crash Bandicoot, the original Sony PlayStation mascot. There's also the influential and pop, uh, popular Tony Hawk's skateboarding series and the beloved character like Spyro, Spyro the Dragon. Um, he also was mentioned that he wanted to, uh, support the new teams to work on franchises he loved as a kid. So it's really interesting, like just some of the stuff that is all coming out. One, the fact that this just fucking happened, like in general, that we live in a world that Microsoft owns Call of Duty. Like, just think about that. They own Call of Duty, Halo, um, Gears of War. They own Overwatch. They own Diablo. World of Warcraft. We haven't even talked about that yet. World of Warcraft, Starcraft, The Elder Scrolls, Fallout. Like, it, it, I'm just fucking mind blown. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot going on with this deal that makes, that changes pr potentially the gaming landscape. And again, I know there's a lot of. This good is hands down the biggest news story we've covered to this date, easily. This is Absolutely. probably the biggest news story in modern gaming history. It is, and I agree with you wholeheartedly that some people might have a little bit of pushback on this deal, mm -hmm. Most, mostly because, um, you know, I think people are really afraid of one entity or one company having control over this many games, but again, um, I think you brought up and, you know, raised a lot of really good points that basically show, like, hey, this can be a good thing, actually, and here's why, um... I think it'll, like you said, I think it'll give the opportunity for a lot of different studios to maybe work on some stuff that, you know, maybe they have just, has just been on the back burner, but, you know, Blizzard has always been like, oh no, sorry, like that, that has to wait, this has to wait, you guys have to do this or this instead, and, you know, that can cause a lot of burnouts and can cause a, a, a huge negative workplace if you're constantly being told you have to do these games that you don't want to do, um, Again, with Microsoft taking over so many huge IPs, like you said, it'll, you know, now you can start cross-pollinating some of these game studios 
and getting some, you know, maybe they're subject matter experts on some of these games that, you know, you didn't have at your disposal before. Um, having so many talented first-person shooter designers be under your umbrella, now all of a sudden you can maybe get some help with Halo if you're having some issues with Halo, which, newsflash, they are. Um, you can have some different, like, you can have the guys that, or the guys and, and gals, I used guys as a plural term, but the folks that work on World of Warcraft, you know, you can have those folks helping you with the Elder Scrolls Online because, you know, Elder Scrolls Online is, is pretty healthy and it's a decent little decent little universe, but it's nowhere near as big as WoW. Uh -huh. But maybe you can bump some ideas off of the people that, you know, work on Elder Scrolls Online and maybe they can help you get or the people that work on WoW and maybe they can help push ESO to the next level. Uh -huh. Maybe the folks that work on, you know, Overwatch can now revive an IP. Um, now maybe you can go ahead and make a purchase and revive the IP known as, uh, you know, I, I don't know, Shadowrun. Um, there's yeah. all kinds of things that can come from this that, you know, to me, I just see such a positive thing coming, you know, down the line from this acquisition that the people that are really going to benefit from this, not only Blizzard, not only Microsoft, but just gamers in general are really going to see the benefits of what this really means for them as far as some of their favorite franchises. It's certainly not a death sentence to some of your franchises. I'm sure there are people out there that might love Blizzard, um, I guess, or Activision, but hate Microsoft. Mm -hmm. For whatever reason, that's the case. But, you know, you also have to say, maybe this frees Blizzard from some of that. I mean, I'm not going to try to be, you know xenophobic or anything crazy i'm not trying to say this in a dickhead way but like maybe this will free blizzard up from some of the chinese influence that they've had mm -hmm. over them recently um you know you see a studio like riot have such like they're getting pushed so hard by um you and know, more so in the sense too, like i not to not to interrupt you but to piggyback mm -hmm. off of that too more so in the sense of the censorization of those products and mm -hmm. the enabling. Because at the end of the day, I don't care what anybody fucking says. I don't. I really don't care. The reason that they bent over backwards and fucking rolled over and showed their belly and all of that instead of fucking siding with the people on this and siding with the ability to have the freedom of speech and to support its, you know, its professional players and all that was because of the fucking money at the end of the day. They knew yeah. they were going to lose too much goddamn money because yep. all they're worried about, as we've seen with fucking years, is making sure Call of Duty has its support every single fucking year. And sure, mm -hmm. we'll peter out a couple of products on the side, at least in Activision. And on Blizzard, whatever, all they had to worry about was making sure that they had a proper monetization system with all the games that they had. They had some way to get extra money out of you each and every fucking time hearthstone and the, nothing against hearthstone i like hearthstone as a game um it's a, one of the few card games that digital card games that actually i really enjoy playing that in the elder scrolls legends which r.i.p um but they always had some form of overtly like over the top mon monetization and granted at the end of the day, this is a business. Microsoft's trying to make money at the end of the day on this as well, obviously. You don't... But to quote Paris Lilly from Gamertag Radio, kind of funny, you don't spend $70 billion to keep things the fucking same. And that goes for a lot of fucking ways. One specifically being... I, I Listen, I'm all for... Like, the Asian market is what really has really fucking helped Blizzard like for a long fucking time with a lot of their IP... But not in the right ways now, where when they bend over backwards, instead of supporting, you know, 99% of their, you know, uh, Asian market when it comes to their player base who are being affected by, you know, the basically like a regime over there that is just completely wrecked freedom of speech and are pretty much like, you know, any form of outspokenness and protesting is basically you're you're done. You I mm -hmm. would fear for your life that instead of supporting that, they're more supporting the dollar at the end of the day. And I feel I feel confident in one thing that 
if if any of the past few years have told us it's that xbox has been open and xbox has enabled more creative voices and more freedoms of speeches when it comes to what kind of stories they're telling and what you know um the content that is in those stories may be controversial to some like, Oh God, people who are <gasps> transgender or people who are <gasps> gay. Oh my God. Or <gasps> somebody of color in a powerful position, like stuff like that. That is like, or a woman like in a powerful position it, with in a game, like it's just like, they've been able to do that so well that, like, finally, fucking Blizzard is going to come into the 21st fucking century. And Activision. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I just no, want to yeah. hammer that point home. Like, because you, touch, you touched a nerve, but um, that, you know, that's what I didn't even think about that earlier, that finally, like, they're going to actually have a fucking backbone in the right way. Yeah. And I know, like, from time to time, maybe, you know, I or maybe even the entire show, but I know myself especially might have come off as like, hey, this person doesn't like, you know, certain forms of capitalism or, or whatever you want to say about me. And mm -hmm. I, I'm i just in, it's just such a weird spot that I, I can't really be justified. I can't really be explained in political terms as far as my beliefs. And I'm someone who like, I agree, you know, I'm not someone who wants to give up all my all my rights and, and everything to the government. But at the same token, you know, I believe that sometimes capitalism can bring out the worst in us 100%. Uh, as a society. But on the same side of things, I 100% believe in a freedom of speech. Mm -hmm. I 100% believe in, in, you know, a lot of the, basically in all of the bill of rights of the constitution of the United States of America, especially inside of this country. And, you know, I think, Sometimes it can be misconstrued when we're talking about video games. And at the end of the day, this is a video game podcast. But sometimes people from America can really be a little bit... Other countries might define us as whiny. I've heard other countries describe us as, you know, completely unaware of how lucky we are to be in this country. And I've heard people from this country that have traveled to other countries a lot say that some of the people here don't realize how good you have it. And at the same token... All of those can be true, but at the same time, we all, I, I mean, we all as Americans should strive to want better for everyone that lives here, not just white people, not just anything. You know, we, we should want every single individual that lives inside this country to have a better experience with their life. And this is something that, you know, Microsoft, at the end of the day, genius bro, like, uh, absolutely genius business transaction this it can't be like i'm not trying to say like oh my god thank god for microsoft coming to save the day wow out of the goodness of their heart they acquired blizzard for this billions of dollars and man they're really doing a great thing like they're doing a great service to the community and to the world none of that's true like i'm saying that you know it's a side effect of this of this acquisition like everyone in at blizzard is going to benefit from this i would think everyone at microsoft is going to benefit from this but at the same time it it, it can't be ignored of how you know blizzard kind of bowed to the chinese regime and you know whether you like to admit it or not um you know communism to me is uh it's a pretty big net negative in my opinion because you know you just you 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 are you know basically like you said silencing a vast majority of your country the people in your country just for the name of maintaining control and that's never a great thing and i think getting out of that umbrella of pressure is fantastic for blizzard and it's going to be fantastic for gamers and especially the pro players uh, because now they're going to have a little bit more of a voice i don't want to get it twisted and pretend like you know, they're going to be 100% safe from any ridicule from the company, but uh, it's it is going to be better, you know? Mm -hmm. No, definitely. And that's that's where I'm at as well. It's it just it just makes me feel very hopeful about the future of kind of getting established with just Blizzard and this baseline of what is acceptable and what isn't in general. 
you know, in in a in a you know morally and ethically right way. Um, but anyways, let's talk about the games end of this. We've mm-hmm. we've we've talked here. Uh, I I wanted to make sure we touched on a lot of the you know tougher subjects about it, but let's talk about some of the gaming aspects of this. Where do you think Call of Duty goes from here? Like just baseline. Like, I mean, like I said, I totally. I've learned my lesson with Bethesda that it. I thought, okay, this is a big enough franchise. These are big enough franchises that there's no way they keep them. You know, uh, at first, that is. There's no never say never, but there's no way that they keep these games. You know, first party exclusives on their platforms. But lo Mm -hmm. and behold, they didn't, you know, and slowly that I've kind of thought about it. And really that, you know, shout out to Paris again, that that really didn't make me think, you know, they spent seven billion dollars. They're not going to keep things the way they are for seven billion dollars, like if they're spending that much money on it. So when they're spending 70 billion dollars on Activision Blizzard, they're definitely not keeping things the same. So where do you think Call of Duty goes from here? Do you can you see them going, you know, Obviously, they have Warzone, the standalone experiences, zombies thrown in there as well, the CDL. Like, do you think Call of Duty goes platform in a way, kind of combining all of that or having two separate entities? I'm hearing a lot of people, uh, you know, the the sources are saying we're going to see, you know, obviously, Phil has also came out. He just tweeted while as soon as we went live that he talked to he actually talked to Sony representatives uh, and their executive team making sure and reaffirming that hey we are honoring already previously established deals right now um when it comes to uh the biggest franchise and obviously what he's talking about is call of duty um that they're honoring whatever established deals they have and that they plan to still support call of duty for now or they have no intention for now of making call of duty you know taking call of duty off playstation But there's also wording in that that very much says, like, right now we're doing that. You know, Mm -hmm. we'll see when the deal clears and whatnot. So where do you think they kind of go from here? There's a lot of different ways as somebody who's played Call of Duty competitively and things like that. And who is much more familiar with kind of the back end of Call of Duty than me. Where do you think where do you think they go, really? Yeah, I I don't know. See, I know, you know, you're saying you bring up some really good points saying like there's no way that they would make this acquisition and not you know make some changes here that all really does make sense to me but the same on the same token i would think that call of duty is a tentpole franchise that could really carry you monetarily and recoup some of your uh, some of the money that you spent on this acquisition um not saying that it's right not saying that it's wrong but I would see Call of Duty the game staying probably the same. If it's making so much money year over year, game, like I was kind of watching, uh, you know, kind of we talked about them before the show recently. But Moist Critical or or uh, <laughs> Penguin Penguin Z O One or whatever on on Charles White Junior. He was uh, reacting to the YouTube video uh, about Valve carrying. Left for Dead and how much better it is than Back for Blood, even back then. Mm-hmm. And I heard, you know, I watched. Basically, he reacted to it on a, on one of his streams, and he was just talking about video games in general, where he was saying that it was super important to games back then to have this element of realism and the fact that you kind of had to sell your game to gamers. Now, you know, he brought up a really good point, and he said gamers will buy fucking just about anything nowadays, so you don't have to do all this basically quality work you can do a half-ass product like has been done uh and people are still gonna buy it pretty much regardless and then better yet people will go to twitter and argue for your product even if it's pig shit and it really struck struck me in a way that's you know kind of sad but it's it's honestly the truth because you don't you know expect certain things from games anymore in fact as Charles White put it so eloquently, most people actually are are basically in the understanding that, oh, every game this release is basically a early access game and that it'll just get better over time. So where do we go as a gaming industry to just accept that type of product? I know a lot of people will say like, 
So old Halo fans or Halo esports fans are pains in the asses and all they do is cry about the product, cry about this, expectations are XYZ. But also you have to understand that some of the older people, like myself, like I bought N64 games that like you just didn't get patches for fucking Goldeneye. You just didn't get patches for fucking Ocarina of Time. Once yeah. the game went gold, that was it. Like you might there might they might release like an expansion that can go into a memory card or something goofy mm -hmm. but like by and large the game you got was the was the game and i saw on twitter today someone said you know people want to complain about people who complain about halo infinite but don't realize that n64 games came out in 1998 and were fucking with more content were more complete mm -hmm. with a minimal amount of the budget and they're so true and all of that is just a really long way of saying, like, I don't think Call of Duty is going to change the formula very much because they just make too much money off of it. But where you can see some really interesting changes is kind of everywhere else, I would think. And all the other LP or all the other, you know, RPs and, and all the other games that like these uh, that is under the Blizzard tentpole, that's under the Activision tentpole, and that's under the Microsoft tentpole. Um, I think it's a it's a net positive. But I, I do think Call of Duty is going to stay the same. Now, where what do I think is going to change? I do honestly think that the CDL will make some changes because we can clearly see that the CDL is a gross... Like, at this point, the ex, like the experiment's pretty much over. Um, it's a pretty big fail. Uh -huh. um, the game is in a really bad place. They don't have, like... Cert, they don't still don't have a, a couple of game modes. They still don't know when they're first playing their first tournament. There's so much wrong with Call of Duty right now in the CDL that um, you know there's gonna be there's gonna have to be changes with that. But I think you know uh, I saw a lot of people bouncing off these ideas like oh now now just imagine with esports engine who were the people that ran MLG now you might be able to have Halo and COD and StarCraft lands all under the same roof again just like we used to back in the early 2000s mm -hmm. some of those um takes have been thrown out there and I don't necessarily agree with those all the way but I will say that um you know overall I'm, I'm just genuinely excited uh to see what comes of this going forward especially um and it's this is like 100% one of my favorite things will be the day that we see that Bobby Kodak, the mechanical dildo bull riding <laughs> douchebag himself, finally gets fucking an axe to the head. Uh, metaphorically speaking, yeah, metaphorically. Only, in, only in terms of career, not in terms of like actually really getting a fucking axe to his head. Right. No, definitely. But I would like to play. I would like to play a uh, a mod to Skyrim or something where I could just put an axe into Bobby Kotick's head. Kyo! <laughs> <laughs> or uh, do the spinning move when you have such a high blade skill and yes. cut, cut his head off. Yes, exactly. And then you can pick it up and play with it. Yeah, like that's that's <laughs> what I want. I like play basketball with Bobby Kotick's head on Skyrim. Shoot the J, shoot it. <laughs> uh, but no, yeah, it's. I can I can really see it going in a lot of directions, like. You know, I agree with you that there's going to be a lot of large scale changes. I think the Call of Duty, like, if they, I mean, that's even if they keep it. But at the end of the day, I think, I think the brand's recognizable enough that, at least within esports, that it's recognizable enough that they don't want to necessarily throw that away. That mm -hmm. I could see it going like, like you're saying, all under one roof to be able to actually do, hey, we're going to have like if Microsoft's able to partner, you know, who the fuck knows? They might even buy esports engine. Like, you never know if they really want to actually commit full time to, uh, you know, have a long term commitment to esports. Now that they have, you know, three of the bigger esports out there, and two of them have their own professional, truly like franchise professional leagues in Call of Duty League and uh, Overwatch League. If you want to put all three of those under some kind of banner, why not purchase somebody like? esports engine or whatever you know like and make the newest you know make a true successor to mlg where you're like you're saying you're able to have those all under one banner and that might be a little bit easier to kind of control the messaging across the board where you have you know hey we're having it's all it leads back to you know i'm just throwing mlg v2 or whatever like just placeholder name there but you have it's almost like the x games where you have or the Olympics, you have certain sports competing in different things, like specific games that just fall under there that kind of funnel back into this one brand that kind of keep everybody centered. You know what I mean? Like, it keeps it all, in, it simplifies everything where you're not 
fucking, you know, worried about 10 different leagues. It kind of keeps everything all bundled up into one thing. And I have a feeling that has to be a little bit easier to control, um, especially, too, if you're talking about Activision, who alone had these two major franchise uh, professional sports esports leagues in Call of Duty League and Overwatch League. Those alone, having two two large scale entities like that, even if you know they are up and down at times, that's still two truly professional sports leagues that you have to fucking maintain. Like that's just nuts. So being able to kind of focus a lot of that, I think, would help Microsoft if they really did want to go that way. In terms of the actual game itself, I can't see, and I kind of just had this idea. I'm going to get to that after a second. The one that I think most people think of is, hey, we're going to see Call of Duty in terms of almost like Halo in a sense of, hey, you're going to have your free-to-play option, which is Warzone, and that's going to be available on every... Like, I think that is the form that would stay on PlayStation, would stay, you know, wherever you wherever you're playing the game, specifically, obviously, PlayStation would be the other option, but that's where you're able to get your Call of Duty fix in that free-to-play version of the game. After that, though, you know, maybe they do have where Call of Duty is a platform or whatever the traditional Call of Duty option is going to be. That's going to be the Xbox exclusive. That's going to be, you know, what you sign up for Game Pass for, what you get into. And you, that's what your exclusivity deal gets you. That's what you're able to control, because no matter what. Yeah, it's Call of Duty at the end of the day. But like I keep saying, you don't spend 70 million dollars to not do anything with it. Um, I, I'm pretty sure Paris is going to end up getting, you know, making money off this somehow. I have to pay him money for using this every time now. <laughs> he probably has a copyright at this point. Uh, but, you know, the sentiment stays the same that I could see, like, I see that being more the option that we see still, because you can't completely take Call of Duty off there. Like, you could. I mean, you could. You spend $70 million, like I keep saying, but the fact that you have a foothold and you're making that much money, and I truly do believe that Phil's honest when he says, hey, we don't necessarily want to break up communities. That goes against basically our mission statement at this point is making gaming more accessible for everyone. So you have to offer them in some way. But this one's out there, and it's kind of piecing it together because I saw a tweet that Greg Miller put out um, that kind of hinted at that. And just thinking out loud, knowing that Phil has said this on record, like, hey, we we're willing to try this. We're willing to put this out there. It's not, you know, on us. We're interested in making it as accessible as possible. When he comes out and says, because I had the quote right up here, wherever it went, um, that Phil Spencer tweeted out, he said, Phil time, Phil time, Phil time. Well, I didn't even think of that. Uh, had uh, like I was referencing earlier, had a good call. Uh, had good calls this morning, or this week. Sorry, this week with leaders at Sony. I confirmed our intent to honor all existing agreements upon acquisition of Activision Blizzard and our desire to keep Call of Duty on PlayStation. Sony is an important part of our industry, and we value our relationship. So Greg kind of hinted at this, but okay, Game Pass on PlayStation Five. They've been open. I mean, Phil has been open to on record saying, you know, we want to get to a place where we could throw that Game Pass app anywhere. Nintendo Switch, he said, PlayStation and Sony, he said. So if they, you know, come 2024, when by the time everything's settled and done and, you know, if potentially Sony has a deal in place with activision blizzard already that hey we have content exclusivity and the marketing rates for uh uh call of duty for the next two entries in 2022 and 2023 already you know they're gonna honor that yada yada but when 2024 rolls around and there's no more contracts there's no more previous agreements whatever their PlayStation's obviously and Sony's obviously want to. Hey, we want to keep this train rolling. That's where Phil comes out and says, "Cool, let's put Game Pass on PlayStation. Let's get let's find a way to make that work in a in a in terms of cloud streaming, 
Now, granted, that also then says, fuck, well, I can't do, you know, whatever on there, you know, but or at least who knows? Maybe they could like, I mean, the architecture is not drastically different, but, you know, in a large scale, but there are there are differences to the architecture of the hardware. But point being, though, even if you're getting the, you know, X Cloud version of Game Pass on there, OK, cool, we'll put Game Pass on there. You could play Call of Duty that way. Outside, if you don't want to play Warzone, if you want to play the traditional Call of Duty, you could buy an Xbox or a platform in our ecosystem, or we could get the Xbox uh, Xbox streaming app on the PlayStation, on the Sony devices. I, I really, I think we're closer to that more so than ever before. Seeing something Xbox related, and I would think Game Pass on a PlayStation device. I think this deal puts that closer than ever before. Um, I know, I know it sounds fucking bananas to say, but I know Microsoft is the one who is very open to it. But now this is really that ace up the sleeve that, okay, because that was the whole, re- I mean, Call of Duty is the whole reason that Sony doesn't have a first party shooter in their lineup where, you know, you Nintendo doesn't need that. But on PC, Counter-Strike, Overwatch, or well, Overwatch, not necessarily, but Counter-Strike really is probably the PC exclusive shooter, you know, big, large scale esports shooter that's out there. Now that PUBG is on everything, now that, you know, a lot of these games are at Valorant, too, you could say. Um, but on Xbox side, they have Halo and Sony had resistance back in the day. They had kill zone that never really found the footing that they wanted to wanted them to in the way that Halo did and Counter-Strike did on PC. But they never necessarily needed that. Once we got to the PlayStation 4 generation and Xbox no longer had the um, marketing rights to Call of Duty and stuff like that. And they in, and PlayStation and Sony invested hard in that. They didn't need a shooter because people just naturally gravitated towards PlayStation while they had, you know, 120 plus, I think it is now, million units out there that they just knew that, hey, I'm playing Call of Duty on my PlayStation. And there were still people obviously who played on Xbox, but they didn't need that exclusive because they had Call of Duty and the majority of people played on that platform. So now that they don't, now that they potentially could not have that in the future, that puts a lot of pressure on them to say, fuck, okay, we don't. So we either have to, we need to fill the, fill that hole in some way, or we could just nut up and bring Game Pass or game Xbox game streaming onto our devices. So I don't know, man. It's it's a fucking wild time to think about all of that. Um, there are a lot of fucking roads that this kind of just... It's like the best shit show possible. <laughs> um, just kind of a couple of other things I just want to touch on real quick. Um, and shout out to Adam Bankhurst over at IGN, kind of funny best friend, um, who uh, I believe is now full-time over there, I think. Um, but we quote him a lot on the show. Go over there and give Adam a click. He did a really, really good job of breaking this whole de- uh, the whole deal down really in like almost an FAQ version. Um, but... Looking at this now, just to give you an idea, the um, the studios they are acquiring are obviously Blizzard Entertainment and the, you know, uh, multiple studios that are under that umbrella. But they look at that as one entity, really. Beanox, Digital Legends, High Moon Studios, Infinity Ward, King, which we haven't even talked about that. Fucking Candy Crush and shit's on there now that Microsoft owns that. You know how many money, how much millions and billions, I should say, dollars they're going to make off of all the Karens out there who play Candy Crush on their phone? <laughs> that'll, that'll, Too right, much. That right there, they'll never have to worry about money again. Anyways, Radical Entertainment, Raven Software, Sledgehammer Games, Toys for Bob, and Treyarch. Um, so that now puts currently Microsoft has 23 studio first party studios that they already have. Uh, that includes obviously Zenimax, Bethesda and all that. They would then have 34 game studios under one banner, which is just fucking bananas to think about. Um, so some of the biggest franchises that they now have, obviously call of duty. We talked about overwatch, Warcraft, um, Hearthstone, Diablo, Starcraft, Spyro, Crash Bandicoot, Guitar Hero, Candy Crush, like we mentioned, um, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, Skylanders, which I don't really, I mean, that's obviously Skylanders is a big deal to a certain age demographic and they make fucking tons of money off that shit. Um, or they did. Um, 
but also too geometry wars shout out um there we go i think that was like on everybody's hard drive on in the 360 days just for the sole fact it was like a demo included um so i think everyone played that game um but yeah man it's real like i said really good breakdown of kind of everything uh the deal uh that kind of went down with the deal or is currently going down with the deal um they're bringing over nearly 10,000 employees in 36 countries uh, into the deal, which is nuts to think about handling. Um, and also, too, to point out, Sony's stock allegedly fell by $20 billion following the news of on uh, of Activision and uh, Xbox's deal. So we're talking like 13% was originally the largest drop in 2008, and I think it was almost like 20% or something like that they did. Wish I would have bought puts. Wish I would have known. Right. Bought puts on that. Um, and I wish I would have bought calls on fucking uh, Activision because that shit went through the roof yesterday, obviously. Um, but yeah, man, this is a fucking bananas deal. Um, it, it, it's just, there's so much, I mean, it's hard. There's so much theorizing we could do and there's so much, you know, what could come of this? What's, you know, all this stuff that we can really get out of it. And it just, the possibilities are endless. Like we live in a world now where, you know, Toys for Bob can make a bash or a bash a uh, banjo kazooie game, or we could have, you know, we're I, it, the irony with everything with Crash Bandicoot obviously makes sense, but like it's just it's bananas to think about what all is there, and we didn't even talk about like World of Warcraft, man. I listen. I've 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 uh, drank the I've drank the Kool Aid with that game before multiple times. I mean, it's a it's a game that got me interested in open world games really when I was a fucking kid, and really PC ga a lot of PC games in general. Um, but like every now and then, I'll get the itch just to go back and just fucking power level and stuff like that. But I I'm not gonna fucking pay fifteen dollars a month or whatever it is to play that. But if it's now included, if other if a basic WoW subscription is included in my Game Pass subscription, I fucking might hop in there every now and then because I clearly if I'm playing through Skyrim for the umpty time and not playing a, a the better Elder Scrolls game in Oblivion, I clearly don't value my time. So, you know, why not play a game that values my time even less? <laughs> um, but, uh, but yeah, man, it's it's just nuts. I never thought we'd see a deal like that. I, I said that with Bethesda, but... I mean, I figured they were going to try to acquire a couple of other studios, but it also makes you think, like I, I kind of mentioned at the top of the show, but that rumor that Microsoft w uh, was uh, like uh, inquiring about EA and potentially, you know, and acquiring them. And so many people were like, oh, they never do that. Oh, they never do that. that the legitimacy of that now has pretty much been confirmed that that definitely where conversations definitely took place because if they were going to spend it on that, you know, it's, it's crazy, man. I'm, I'm so, I'm so excited. And I'm also kind of like, just, there's just so many ways that this can go that, and I think the majority of them are positive, but it's crazy to think about, you know, just, I don't know, just everything, man. So, Mike, anything you kind of want to touch on before we wrap up the show? Yeah, because this is the only. This is, I mean, granted, there's other news stories, but they pale in comparison. We'll be here all night if we want to go on about right. that. We keep talking about Activision Blizzard all night. Um, what's kind of, I guess, one last thing you kind of want to touch on before we kind of wrap up? Uh, you know, kind of closing remarks, I guess, on everything. Uh, obviously, we're going to be talking about this for a long ass time, um, but kind of just for today, our top level thoughts. What do you? What do you kind of think, you know, last thing you kind of want to touch on? Um, I'd say that this is, you know, again, we've said, we've had a lot of talks about what Microsoft wants to do going forward, what their plan of attack is. And I think, you know, when you see this, this kind of huge investment happen, it's obviously proof that, you know, they're 100% committed to making this thing work um and if anyone was you know wondering you know how feasible is game pass really um obviously you have to say very <laughs> um this is 
more proof that they are putting, you know, everything they have into making this work. And I really hope all things considered going forward that, you know, we go ahead and, uh, you know, we see more. Eventually, I want to see more purchases of game studios. But again, um, I just think the opportunities and, and possibilities now are now basically limitless for Blizzard and Activision. And now instead of having all this pressure to perform and make monies, some of the studios, you know, in-house have. Now, I don't know that that's going to be as important. Um, I think it'll still be important, but I think, you know, they're going to have a lot more freedom and there'll be a lot less pressure. You know, Microsoft just let... Um, just let 343 off the hook for not having Halo Infinite ready. So, you know, when you look at something like that, um, that's, that's pretty awesome in my opinion. And I really hope that, you know, more, uh, more freedom to make sure the game is appropriate before release is done going forward. I totally agree with what you're saying. You know, I, we see eye to eye on that shit. The big thing that I guess I want to kind of end with is while this deal's huge, this deal's great, I don't want to see them, I don't want to see the issues that led up to this be just kind of swept under the rug. Like, mm-hmm. it, it's like the, the, <laughs> the, uh, the screenshot from The Simpsons everyone sends around of, today we celebrate Martin Luther King, tomorrow, or today we remember Martin Luther King, tomorrow we don't. <laughs> um, like, it's something like that, that, that mindset of, Yes, this story is overtaking a lot of that. And I'm sure that's what Activision wanted out of this. They wanted something to come or a big sale like this, selling to somebody that makes a big wave in the industry. And that takes the focus off of the problems that they have from. And we're talking the executives, not the nine. We're talking about the one percent, not the ninety nine percent of incredibly talented people who work there and are probably great fucking people, you know, not the one percent of shitholes that you know, are horrible people and do horrible things to people. Um, but mostly with this, I want to see change out of this. Obviously, all the great things from the gaming side that will come out of this, I'm really excited for. But the big thing, obviously, being I want change. I, I want I don't want the message behind all of this that led to this, really. I don't want that falling to the, you know, the wayside. Like, I want this still attacked. It's like I say with people who are pissed off if you know, there, it's no secret. We're obviously, you know, we are very pro worker. We are very, um, you know, or I like to think that we are, you know, have progressive ideas in the sense of, you know, how people approach themselves and, um, you know, others and, you know, trying to find better ways to make, you know, people's lives easier, or you know, tackle the actual problems people are facing. Um, but what I tell people is if they're not happy about that, you know, and I told people, if you're not happy about things, don't take your foot off the gas, you know, Mm -hmm. make sure don't because something happened now that you think potentially addressed it. Cool. Don't stop talking about it. Make sure that it's on the radar. I'm somebody who is very much in the camp of, we need to find a better way to handle the student debt crisis, whether that's forgiveness or finding better ways for people, more repayment plans or whatever. But you know, people were in arms about it with the election coming up. Certain things were promised. Certain things haven't happened yet. And like I said, when we thought we were heading one direction with that fight, nothing happened. I said, keep your fucking voices up. Don't Mm -hmm. take your foot off the gas. Don't hold like these people who are shitty people. And I'm talking about, you know, the executive team, specifically Bobby Kodak to blizzard. Now hold their fucking feet to the fire. Like, we can't let this go away because this is a great fucking story and it's it's going to be it's an exciting time right now for gaming like there's the potential to see new things come out of Activision Blizzard that specifically Activision that isn't same old same old like Call of Duty is exciting to see more the incredibly talented teams they have there work on things that could potentially you know really excite them again you know and they're not held at gunpoint to work on Call of Duty like that's great metaphorically that is um but yeah, that that's kind of my last thing. So, Mike, I think 
think that's going to do it for episode this week. Why don't you tell people where they can find you on the internet, talk about all we talked about, obviously, everything with Call of Duty, and just the Activision Blizzard uh, acquisition by Microsoft, which is unbelievable to say in general still. Where can people find you to talk about all that that we talked about today on the internet? Yeah, You can find me on Twitter at T-O-I-S-X-L-D-I-E-R. And on Twitch at MP underscore Toy Soldier. And don't forget that, uh, you know, Bobby Kotick rides the mechanical dildo bull. Now go ahead and uh, <laughs> why don't you give them uh, where they can find you? Yeah, don't forget. He's an asshole. Um, <laughs> uh, as always, I'm your host, Travis White, a.k.a. Travelis, on most internet platforms, including at Travelis underscore on Twitter. That's T-R-A-V-L-E-S-S underscore. You could also find me streaming time to time on twitch.tv slash travelist underscore same as twitter and you could also play some video games with me over on xbox live and pretty much every other platform at just regular old travelist that's t-r-a-v-l-e-s-s no underscore and this ladies and gentlemen has been your newest episode of the game pass gamecast potentially one of our biggest episodes of the game pass gamecast your home and your go-to podcast for all things xbox Xbox Game Pass, and of course, PC gaming, including news, rumors, and conversation around them damn good video games. You can catch new episodes of the show when they drop each and every Friday morning on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, SoundCloud, and all other major podcast services. So be sure to subscribe to us, rate us, review us, all of that jazz I tell you every week, wherever you get a podcast at. And follow us on Twitter at GPGC Podcast. Stay up to date with everything regarding the show, video games like, and our dope giveaways. And with that being said, Mike, that's going to do it for our episode this week. Thank you, everyone, so much for listening, sharing, and being a part of our growing community. Game on. Wash your hands. Listen to the doctors. Black Lives Matter. Fuck Bobby Kotick. And we will see you next week.